So let's take a look here about um, how we can actually manipulate the formula to calculate molecular weight. So last time we learned that uh, to do molar mass, or what I'm going to call molecular weight, you take the sum of all the atoms. And we use the periodic table. They have the numbers, which are the molar masses for the individual atoms. We add them all up there, and then we get the molar mass of a molecule. For example, suppose we had calcium hydroxide. So what elements do we see in calcium hydroxide? We see one mole of calcium, right? And then we see one, uh, two moles of oxygen. There's the oxygen, but we had a two over here, right? And we also see two moles of hydrogen in there, okay? So that's how you make up calcium hydroxide. Now we go to our periodic table. We find out that calcium there weighs 40 grams per mole, oxygen 16, hydrogen 1. Again, we're, we're rounding the numbers off. I don't like decimals, right? And then you just multiply it. So we got uh, 1 times 40, that's 40. 2 times 16, 32. 2 times 1 is 2. And that should add up to a molar mass for calcium hydroxide of 74 grams for every one mole. Okay, that's what we learned last time. Now, the general formula that we generated for that should be that the molar mass therefore equals the mass divided by the moles. So for calcium hydroxide, if you go back here for a second, you saw that calcium hydroxide, the mass was 74 grams, and that would be for one mole. Now, suppose we had a problem, though, where we had a different amount of moles, right? So we could use that. So what is the molecular weight? Again, I'm using molecular weight here in the same way that I would say molar mass. The two are the same. And you can use the abbreviation MW for that. So what is the molar mass or the molecular weight of a compound? Now, we're going to do an unknown compound this time. If I've weighed out 100 grams and somebody tells me it must be 4 moles, right? Well, let's go ahead and use this formula over here, right? Molar mass is mass divided by moles, okay? So the molar mass, molecular weight equals the mass. I had 100 grams. I divide it. It's 4 moles, and that must mean that that unknown compound had a molar mass, or molecular weight, of 25 grams per mole. So that's going to be our first equation. So this equation, let's make sure we know it is equation number one. Could we rearrange that equation if we had a different problem? Well, sure we can with just a little bit of easy math. So we can rearrange that equation to also get us moles equals mass divided by molecular weight. Let's call that equation number two. Let's go ahead and use that one. Suppose I had a problem now where it says how many moles. So this time the unknown thing I'm going to figure out will be moles. So how many moles would there be if I had 200 grams of a compound? And I know that the molar mass is 40. Let's pick this equation here and let's plug in the numbers there. So we now know that there's 200 grams. And we know that the molar mass is 40. So that's 200 divided by 40 must, have mean, must mean that, sorry, I had 5 moles of this unknown compound. But there's a third way we could actually rearrange this compound here. The third way is let's use mass as the unknown. So mass equals the molar mass times, not divide, but times by the number of moles. Let's call that equation number 3. Okay, let's try a problem with that. Suppose I have a problem that says, what is the mass of something if I have four moles of an unknown compound and the molar mass is eight grams per mole? Let's use this equation now. So the mass that I'm trying to calculate would be, right, the molar mass, which I'm saying is eight. And how many moles do I have? I have four. So eight times four means I must have had 32 grams of that sample. Okay. What if you're not given all the information? How do you go about deciding what you do? Well, you read the problem and you say, well, what's the unknown here? And that tells me which of the equations I should pick out. Let's take a look at a problem here. Suppose the equation is how many moles of calcium hydroxide 
is in 296 grams. Okay, first thing I need to do is I need to decide which of the three equations I'm going to use. So in this equation, how many moles? Moles is the unknown. Moles is the unknown. So let's take a look again at our equations. There was the first one. This one says molar mass. Well, that's not my unknown. This one says moles. Ah, well, that's what I want to figure out, how many moles. So I'm going to use equation number two. Moles equals mass divided by molecular mass. So let's do that. The three equations I've decided I'm going to use equation number two here because moles is what I want to figure out. So I'll use moles equals the mass divided by molecular weight. That's the first thing I need to do is to decide which equation I'm going to use. Next thing I'm going to do is plug in what we know. So what do I know here? Do I know the number of moles? Well, of course not. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Do I know the mass? Yeah, I do. It's 296. So I'm going to plug in 296. But I've got two unknowns here. Do I know the molar mass, the molecular weight? Well, they didn't tell me what it is in the problem, but I remember I know how to calculate molar masses of things like calcium hydroxide. And if you remember, when we started off, that was the very first thing we actually did here. Remember I reminded you, hey, this is how you do calcium hydroxide. We added up the atoms and we said, oh, it was 74. Okay. So now I know that this number over here must have been 74, right? So now I can plug in both numbers. Okay, so it's 296 divided by 74. And now I can get my final answer. And I now have figured out that in this problem there must have been 4 moles.